please stand and join me in the call to worship. A new year has dawned. The old is past and gone. This is a time for new beginnings, a time to encounter God. Ponder the meaning of our days in the face of eternity. Consider again what God has called us to do and to be. Well, today is a special day of celebration. It's celebration for a lot of reasons. One of the reasons is because today is the day that we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. It's the day each year where we reread the story in which Jesus went to John and said, I will be baptized by you. And went into the waters of baptism himself and then became a model for us. And so we reread that story again today on this Sunday as we remember the beginning of his ministry and the way that he began and showed us how to live. And of course, we follow him into the waters of commitment and baptism on a day like today. Secondly, we celebrate because as you see the folks in front of you, it is Youth Sunday. It is a special day to celebrate uh, the leadership of our young people. We open our eyes to the way that they are already leading us today. Uh, it's such a blessing to have young people and have good leaders who thoughtfully and joyfully lead us in worship today. Again, a second reason to celebrate. And finally, these two celebrations have come together in a third celebration. We have the special blessing of baptizing one of the youth of the church, celebrating the waters of baptism from the water itself. And so today I welcome into these waters Sam Ferris. Well, Sam has been attending worship here the last couple of years in youth group this past fall. She came to me uh, last year and said that she wanted to be baptized. We've talked several times about what that means to her and why she's ready to take this step. And so uh, I'd first like to say if there are family members and special friends of Sam who are here today, I'd like you to stand for a moment. As you celebrate with her, we are glad that you're here and here to support her in this decision that she makes Thank you all very much. Well, for Sam, uh, baptism is a promise. It is a, a reminder of how we are going to live. Uh, she knows the power of this symbol. She rejoices. She says that she understands that she comes out of the water free. Every time I talk to Sam about baptism, this big smile comes across her face because she indeed understands that freedom. In fact, the, uh, the baptism verse that I give her now is from John to speak about that freedom. In the, the 8th chapter, the 36th verse, John says, If the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Every time that we have this experience of baptism, we re-understand and reunite around that freedom. And so for her, that freedom is meaningful and it is powerful. And it is worth celebrating this day. And so today, Sam, I ask you the question of freedom that's been asked from these waters for generations. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Then upon a proclamation of your faith in Christ, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, buried with Him into death, raised to walk in newness of life. And so it is today that we celebrate, today that we remember the power of this symbol, that we come together in community and come together in joy, understanding that Christ is here in our midst. The waters are here for us all to be cleansed. Come, let us continue in worship today. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life. And place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. 
Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in not even knowing instead. Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out, readily recognize what he wants from you, and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging down to its level of maturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Body. There are different parts of the body, but every part is important according to 1 Corinthians. Spiritual gifts are like different parts of our body. Every part is necessary in order for the whole body to function right. God gives us spiritual gifts whenever and wherever they are needed. For example, the gift of prophecy is used to build up and, and to encourage and comfort for the benefits of the church. It is important to encourage each other and lift each other's spirits up. When we commit ourselves to Christ, we begin to live like Christ. And that includes using the gifts that God has given us to give each other hope. Please pray with me. Dear God, I just want to thank you for all the gifts that you have given us. And please help us be patient for the gifts that you will give us. And please help us be thankful for the gifts you've already given us. Um, please help us use the gifts that... Um, are here and yet to come for good and to lift each other's spirits up. Amen. This morning's Old Testament reading is found in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 28. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's commands, command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Please remain standing for the gospel reading of Matthew 3, 13 through 17. Jesus then appeared, arriving at the Jordan River from Galilee. He wanted John to baptize him. John objected. I'm the one who needs to be baptized, not you. But Jesus insisted, do it, God's work, putting things right all these centuries, is finally coming together right now in this baptism. So John did it. The moment Jesus came up from out of the wa baptismal waters, the skies opened up and he saw God's spirit. It looked like a dove descending and landing on him. And along with the spirit, a voice. This is my son chosen and marked by my love, the light of my life. Matthew 16, 21 through 26. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good is it? What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? So the emperor's new groove, am I right? The movie starts with a musical number about the name char main character who's a uh, self-centered, uh, greedy emperor named Kuzco who gets turned into a llama and then has to make his way back to the palace. Um, anyway, it starts with a musical number about him and how selfish he is and uh, basically just talks about how every th the only thing that matters to him is himself. Um, and afterwards, to really drive the point home on the kind of guy Kuzco is, which, that's the emperor's name, um, he meets up with a villager and promptly informs him that he's tearing down his house so he can build up a, um, uh, 
private water resort for himself. Um, and for the rest of the movie, while, um, while the villagers trying to help him get back to the palace, uh, he continues to just be the, a jerk the whole time. Um, so in the scripture that I read, Peter's about on the same level of grooviness as uh, Cusco was. Um, when Peter heard that Jesus was going to leave them to be handed to the chief priests, he only thought about how that would affect him. And didn't want Jesus to be leaving already because he wanted him, like everyone else at the time, to help um, deliver them from the Romans. Peter ref refused to accept God's plan and didn't want Jesus to go. And Jesus' response to this is a strong one that I personally think is awesome. Um, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, and continues to scold him for ignoring the concerns of, ignoring the concerns of God. But Jesus doesn't end the discussion by condemning Peter and instead instructs the disciples about how to follow God's plan, telling them to deny themselves and give up their lives to him. When thinking of ways to follow this example that Jesus led, I realized that a powerful way to do this is through baptism. Seeing how it's that, seeing how it's the act of committing yourself to God and giving Him your life. So in the past few weeks of youth group, we talked about commitment to Christ. And when I think of my personal commitment to God, I think of baptism. So no better way than to talk about my own experience of my own baptism. So when I was a tot or a little young and whatever you want to call it, a little kid, <laughs> there was a lot more youth who I looked up to. So seeing them in the congregation participating in communion, I questioned myself and what further steps I wanted to take in my faith. So being the impatient little kid I was, I went to Pastor Matt right after that service and told him I wanted to get baptized. And of course, he gave you the little underhand high five that he does to little kids when they leave. And that's what he did. And he was like, all right. So in the next following weeks, I met with Meredith to take the discipleship class. What I can remember from it was that we were talking about what it meant to accept Christ in our heart. My first step to committing to Christ was baptism. It was a pledge to God and a new look into my faith. So then on Easter Sunday, I was baptized by Pastor Matt. It was truly a joyful and exciting experience. What this looks like in my life today is trying to find better, better ways to forgive. May we find more ways to commit ourselves to God. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us this opportunity to have a relationship with you and to grow closer to you every day. Help us to be more committed to you, amen. Thank you, Eli. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, uh, Jessica. Thank you, those who have shared an important uh, message today about our commitment, about what it means to follow Christ, and uh, an important testimony about our own baptism. It's a reminder to all of us today to remember our own baptism, and maybe a, an invitation to some of us today to make a further step of commitment.